all about the shoes. Hey, older viewers, remember the 76 Olympics when Lasse Viren of Finland won the double gold medal and he ran his victory lap like that because athletes weren't allowed to make money from shoe endorsements back then, but I'll bet you he got a few bucks for wandering around with his Asics on his hands. What a great style. Today we're going to talk about how to transition to a more barefoot style existence. You may have watched the previous video about curing plantar fasciitis and lengthening those calf muscles, and so now we want to fully engage the Achilles tendon and the calves as much as we can throughout the day and enjoy all that shock absorption benefits, that injury prevention benefit from getting competent walking around in barefoot or failing that minimalist shoes. So this is the next best thing. We have a real live authentic pair of Vibrams that have been used like crazy for several years. This is the gold standard of a barefoot style experience because they have the separated toes where your toes are engaged and pushing off and part of the whole process of the stride. Yeah, man, you think they should send me a new pair? Hi, can I have a new pair, Vibram? Anyway, these are great to use for protection against the elements, but let's not forget the importance of enjoying some time connecting to the earth. You can read articles on Mark's Daily Apple about earthing or grounding. Laird Hamilton, the great big wave surfer, says that a lot of his balance comes from a lifetime spent in bare feet walking around in Hawaii and engaging those many, many nerve endings at the bottom of your feet and learning and improving your proprioception. So barefoot is barefoot. Walk around the house at least. Get some time walking around your backyard, a safe area where you're not going to step on oil slicks or broken glass. And then failing that, especially when you're exercising and need some protection, uh, this would be the ultimate experience of Vibrams. A lot of athletes want to gradually build into this so that they don't get injuries or overuse, trauma. And this is such a common thing. There was a class action lawsuit from somebody that sued Vibram because they had insufficient support and protection and the person got injured running. It's like, you can't tell when you're buying this $100 shoe that it's made for something else besides the Nike super duper cushion zoom shoe that's encasing your foot in this massive padded bouncy house experience. Crazy stuff. But point taken that you want to ease into this. So a lot of runners are commenting that they'll go run their six mile run in their regular shoes. They'll start looking for brands that have a little more protection like the New Balance Minimus or the Merrill Trail Glove. And perhaps at the end of their run, don some of these and go do a series of strides on the grass to engage those calves and get used to that longer muscle experience that you get when you're running barefoot. My first suggestion, walk around the house barefoot, get those shoes off, engage those feet, get the nerve endings stimulated, especially on natural surfaces, and now we can go to the next category of shoe. So these are great for sporting, hiking use, maybe not appropriate in all situations, so I transition over to this daily walk around shoe, which you see has almost no padding, no support, so it gives me a pretty authentic, minimalist shoe experience. There are so many brands that are supporting this minimalist movement these days. You can look for articles on Mark's Daily Apple. I think we listed a bunch of brands. We have a free ebook about barefoot living. Pretty simple stuff. Just try to lower the height of your heel progressively over time if you're doing activity, or if you're in the workplace and you want to try something new, look for those shoes that have minimal drop. That's what they call the term between the heel height and the toe height. So this has a zero drop. This is not higher than the toes. You have a 12 millimeter drop on a certain running shoe that's rated that way, or the shoe for nurses. Finally, they're getting to understand that people on their feet all day long have a greater need for a barefoot style experience than anyone. And the padded shoes just cause all kinds of trouble, like the $700 million we spend annually on foot care. I just made that number up. It might be conservative rather than uh, blown up. It's bad news. Go to the store, you see all that crap, get rid of it and get your feet stronger and it will be a path to healing, greater comfort, greater impact and shock absorption, especially on things like a long hike where you put the Vibrams on and your feet feel better at the end than if you use those big giant hiking boots. And I know we have our fashion considerations. Females in the workplace or in social settings have to have their certain high heel shoes. Just realize that those have an adverse impact on the health of your Achilles tendon, your arch, your lower extremities. Try to minimize time in there. Why the high heels anyway? Why don't you come out at your regular height, 
come out swinging. This is me, love me or not, or move on to the next candidate on Match.com or whatever job opportunity you have that they want taller females rather than shorter. What a bunch of nonsense. Let's get back down to the minimalist shoe experience whenever possible. I'm seeing more and more fashionable minimal shoes. It's so much better for your feet. Your feet will thank you, especially if you have foot problems. Watch my video about curing plantar fasciitis and take more and more time in your beautiful bare feet or your minimalist shoes. Good luck.